welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus and um, hundreds of episodes in here. We're in chapter now 38. We're near the end of the book. And what do we find in Exodus 38? Well, you might see we've uh, got 20 verses in here, but I'm just going to read the beginning. Then he made the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood, five cubits long, five cubits wide, square, and three cubits high. And on he goes to describe it in these next verses, some different bits here that are built and created. They've already been described. We've already been over those sections as each piece of the furniture of the sanctuary, each piece of the construction of it uh, was laid out previously from chapter 25 on. And here we just have kind of the actual construction of it. Did you notice that there are a lot of parts here? I mean, this is, this is quite a kit. Um, I've seen greenhouse kits you can buy on the internet. Uh, they'll send you all these different pieces and parts and nuts and bolts and screws and all the pieces you'd want for a greenhouse. Uh, instead of you have to go out and gather it all yourself, you can just buy the kit. Um, this is quite a kit, this sanctuary. It's taking a lot of pieces to pull it all together. Friends, there's so many parts and aspects to it, so many things that carry a meaning, so many pieces where the blood is moved from here to there and so on. Now, the golden calf episode, we had a couple of chapters back, back in Exodus 32, uh, where, remember, the people said, we don't know, Moses has disappeared, you know, we've lost track of him. Aaron, build us a, uh, make an idol that will lead us out of here, make a representation of God. And so he did. He made an idol right there at the foot of the <laughs> Mount Sinai. And what do you have? Uh, that's a violation of the, of some of the several of the commandments. Uh, but but did you notice? And then he called. They called a feast. Uh, this tomorrow will be a feast of the Lord. So they made up this fake worship day with the golden calf. But did you notice there that the the calf? None of these parts, the structure, the meaning, uh, the significance of the different elements of the sanctuary setup. The golden calf worship, as far as we have recorded, had none of that stuff. It was very simple. It was, it was kind of a simplified. It was kind of like, you know, um, idol worship for dummies. Okay, it was very simple. And did you notice then that God's plan has got a lot of pieces? And so when you oversimplify something, you will always mess it up. Yes, we want to be able to concisely state a case or, you know, kind of describe something in a way that's, that uh, helps people understand it. Uh, that's, that's all good. But if you take away the detail that's needed to, to flesh out the, the full meaning of something, uh, then you might have some problems. So I've tried to stay pretty close to the text uh, most of the way through here in terms of describing the meaning. Here's what I guess I want to say today to you. All of these pieces of the sanctuary might seem like it's overkill, like there's too much going on here, there's too much uh, detail, but I believe that the amount of detail that God is using here is just the right amount. It's the amount that's needed for God to achieve his purposes in uh, making the sanctuary uh, structure, system, the, the worship there, the process, the sin removal and offerings and all this. He didn't make it more complicated than he had to. He made it as complicated as was necessary. He didn't make it more simple than uh, uh, too simple. He made it simple enough and yet complicated enough so that it conveyed, is able to be studied and convey the meanings he wants. So lots of stuff going on, as you've seen down through all these episodes. But the meaning, he's not overdone it. But I also don't believe he's underdone it. So we want to look again at, at the what has been given in the text. And that's where my focus has been here. What, uh, what is actually in the text? And to start there, certainly, and be very careful how far we move away from the text. Because as soon as you move very far away from the text, you're going to be off into human developments, human ideas that uh, may lead yourself and others uh, sharply astray. So stay close to the text. This is this is Bible Christianity, friends. Let's stay close to the text. And don't forget the purpose of the sanctuary. This was not a worship structure like, hey, let's get together the guitars and have a big singing thing. No, nothing wrong with that. But this was about the removal of sin, okay? This is about removing sin. And so that, uh, that thought should be foremost, front and center, the sanctuary is God removing sin so that he can dwell with his people. And that purpose, thousands of years ago, 
That purpose is God's purpose today. May sin be removed from your life and mine how, so that God can, can dwell with us. Okay, He wants us to be part of a living sanctuary, a living temple, a living tabernacle for his Holy Spirit to indwell. All right, we'll see you back tomorrow morning and go a bit further here in the book of Exodus. Thank you.